Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look at ways we can come together to more effectively serve the body of Christ. Today, we have Dr. Neil Gillen with us. Dr. Gillen has worked in the past uh, as a uh, house parent uh, there in Ivory Coast. He's also been working with member care with our Free Will Baptist International missionaries. He has a master's degree and a uh, doctorate degree in counseling psychology. Uh, it's good to have you here with Thank us, Dr. You. Gillen. It's and wonderful to be here. We should also mention for many, many, many years, you have also worked with Truth and Peace. So Andy team. An E-team as yeah. well. Uh, many young people will often refer to you as Uncle Neil. Yeah, I'm known by Uncle Neil much more than Dr. Gillard. It, it, I don't know who that is. It seems that way. It seems that way. <laughs> and there is even the fake mustache or two out there. So <laughs> yes. it would seem that you are quite uh, able to work with young people. And so we think about trying to, to bridge the generations and so forth. Uh, uh, some folks that are listening are pastors out there. Some people would be maybe parents, which is a different deal, work with your own child. But right. uh, give us some insight into how is it that we can more effectively work with young folks? Yeah, you know, I, I don't even know if I can answer that question. Well, I, you I do, can. I do think that there is an element of giftedness. Uh -huh. I really do think I, that. I would agree. I think there's some people that just can connect. I do think there's some things that I, we can work tell, on. Yeah, I tell our young people, though, one of my biggest fear in life, my absolute biggest fear in life is I think I connect with young people, but I also know a lot of old guys who think they do. And the kids dread seeing them come. Oh, yes. I said, don't let me be that guy. I don't if I don't anymore, tell me. I can. I, there's fish dying of old age in Old Hickory Lake that need me to catch them. Right. I, I can go do something else. But I, I do think there are some things that we can do that are helpful. One is to understand who you are. Mm -hmm. To expand um, on that. I, I understand who I am. Uh -huh. I'm not a teenager. Yes. So we're I not, have we're been one. Like I heard teenager. Lou Holt say at a graduation speech, he says, I'm talking to you because I've been 25. Mm. You haven't been 70. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I understand who I am. I understand what my personality is like. Uh -huh. um, I, I'm not trying to be them. I'm not going to wear skinny jeans. I think I've worn them all my life. I just didn't know they were called that. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not going to try to be one of them. Right. But I'm going to try to understand them. Mm -hmm. Not only do I need to understand myself, I need to understand the audience to them. Any good communicator understands his audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you understand, they're not miniature adults. Yes. They're not thinking like an adult thinks. You know, uh, the research would suggest, you know, the guy's frontal lobe's not fully developed till he's, what, 28, 29 years old. They're... <laughs> They're going to be do crazy stuff, okay? Right. Uh, and learn to accept them where they are, not try to make them something that they can't be mm -hmm. right now. Um, which means that you got to listen to them. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to try to enter into uh, their world and without being one of them. Yeah. So part of it is understanding who they are and who you are. Okay. I think that uh, another thing is they're well, not. Oh, hold, go ahead. Hold go, that for a ahead. minute. So sometimes we see people that are that do wear the skinny jeans that aren't skinny, and we yes. do see uh, trying to use the language and you know and all this. And when you're saying don't don't worry with that, just be who you are. Think about where you yourself have been and what you would have liked to have known or mm -hmm. or how you would have liked people to interact with you with you when you were younger. So right. there's that aspect. And then you're saying, kind of like give them some room to mess up or understanding. Sure. Absolutely. A little bit of listening and empathy. And you weren't the most mature person when you were that age either. So I'm not sure. Still so, am, but. so I'm talking about the person that's saying this to yeah, themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, not you personally, Neil. <laughs> so, uh, so you think about how, hey, I'm giving them some grace and mm -hmm. so forth. And, and I'm doing that. Okay. So put ourselves there. Yeah. Uh, There's, this generation is different, mm -hmm. just like every generation is. I always say, you know what they talked about in the good old days? They it's talked about the, the good old days. Yeah. Uh, and this is these kids' good old days, and I right. want them to be good. They're not looking for a sermon. They're looking for a relationship. Um, 
when I speak to young people, one of the things I realize is they're not enamored with oratory, mm-hmm. like you and I were. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we would go, what a great preacher. Yeah. <laughs> and they were almost untouchable. Mm-hmm. They were these, where students today want to hear somebody go, oh, I could have coffee with them. Uh-huh. I would love. So they're looking for a relationship. That doesn't happen mm-hmm. per chance. Mm-hmm. I always say it doesn't happen serendipitously. It, it, you have to be intentional mm-hmm. about building relationships. Um, so how how do we do that? Uh, I'm a pastor, I'm, you've done that. So some of the things you've done, how can we take that and yeah. make that work wherever we may find ourselves? Yeah, uh, of course, with Truth and Peace and the E-Team, it's a little bit of an artificial setting because we have them there. We yes. build relationships with us the most delightful thing I do all year yes. is just to be able to be with those students, um, to speak into their lives and let them speak into my life. Mm-hmm. They teach me probably more than I teach them of how to interact into our world. Um, the thing I always go back to is what I call the new TLC. Mm. Uh, if you're going to build a relationship, it takes time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I hear this a lot. I just don't have time. Mm. Uh, I'm a big Buckeye fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge Ohio State fan. I'm probably busier than I've ever been in my life. But somebody said, I got tickets to the Buckeyes game. Guess what? I've got time. Uh, I think we have time for what we want to have time Mm -hmm. for. And again, if you're going to work with them, if you're going to communicate with them, it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you want them to change, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen bit by bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like the Velveteen Rabbit talked about what it means to be real. It doesn't happen all at once. It happens Mm -hmm. bit by bit. And so it takes time, which means it takes time out of your schedule. Yeah, yeah. And your schedule is not – it may mean let's go have a cup of coffee Mm -hmm. or a Coke. Uh, Why don't you go with me? Yeah, Um, take them somewhere. Yeah, let's – yeah, let's go play disc golf. Yes, yes. You so know, go or go to a ball game. Yeah, I'll let's go, go to a ball. I'm going to a ball game. Hey, you want to come with me? I'm going to this concert. You want to come with mm-hmm. me? Find out what they like. Somebody said to me not long ago, "Do you like their music?" I said, so "A lot of it I do, mm-hmm. but some of it I don't. But if they asked me to go to a concert with them, I would, mm-hmm. because that means I'm going to spend time with them. Mm-hmm. I can talk to them, build that relationship." Because once you build the relationship, then you can begin to speak into mm-hmm. their lives. You mentioned the truth and peace and E Team. You said that's a, a bit different, but that has created opportunities. Oh, but, tremendous. But we can we can do that as something on different levels. But some of the trips that folks take with their church or with their families and so forth. Uh, what you guys do with truth and peace, where you've got a concentrated amount of time. Usually the phones are away, and yeah. you've done things like that. We could also look at ways wherever we might be uh, to involve that or do During that. Truth and Peace, we have what we call FaceTimes. Mm-hmm. So with every student, they meet with a staff person one-on-one, and we ask them, you know, how are you doing spiritually? Mm-hmm. But it, we do that as we pro- progress through the – or progress through the uh, – conference where we've already started building a relationship you can certainly do that in the church mm-hmm. and you so can. let's not just talk about the ball game right let's talk about how are you doing you know how's your relationship with your parents mm-hmm. how's your relationship with your siblings how's your relationship with god let's talk about that mm-hmm. a little bit uh, those conversations usually don't happen easy by the way I, I just something that you mentioned i would say if you're a pastor yes uh and the youth take a trip go with them sometimes yes Yes. Don't just preach to them. Go, go skiing with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Play. go to the ball game with yeah. them. Just have fun. Just be there. Sometimes just have fun. Every conversation doesn't have to be a serious one. Mm-hmm. So, again, if I can go back to the TLC, the first yes. thing is time. Time. The other one is listen. Yes, yes. Just listen to mm-hmm. them. Now, you may not agree with them. It's okay. <laughs> they probably don't agree with you either. Right. But Listen. Uh, and take time, and you don't have to give them a sermon if you don't agree. Mm-hmm. That comes after time. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't come sermonically. It comes relationally. And so spend some really significant – ask them questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, most students – by the way, if you want to get them to talk, a teenager, put them in the car. Mm-hmm. 
they will talk in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the conversations that I've had that are really good, it's usually in a van mm-hmm. on the way to a trip where we've had fun. Yeah. Uh, years ago, I used to, we would have a missions retreat and they would have me come in and work with the missionary kids and we would play all week. I would not have any serious conversations. Mm. We went to Opryland. We did all kinds of things. And then the last day I go, okay, we've played now talk to me. Mm -hmm. And they would just open up and talk, but it was, it took time to build that relationship. The last thing is, is it's not only time and listening, but it's to be genuinely concerned mm-hmm. about them. So when they ask, when they know that you care, mm-hmm. they will know that. Yeah. So if they say, you know, I got a big test coming, follow up. So yeah. how'd, how'd your go? test go? Yeah. You know. Praying for uh, the days you take your test. I, I like this guy. How's that going? Yeah. How's it going with that dating relation? Is he the leader of your spiritual mm-hmm. leader in your relationship? Mm-hmm. If not, you probably should dump him. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. But that only comes after time. Mm-hmm. That's kind of an investment in them. Yeah, it is. It, again, if you want to communicate. Right. Now, if you don't. Don't worry. Then, then <laughs> But it's going to take that. Right. Now, all of us are strapped, you know, for time. And, again, some people I do just think have the gift of being able to do mm-hmm. that. You know, I look at our staff that's on Truth and Peace uh, of what I'm just amazed at at the way that they work with the mm-hmm. young people and how the young people, uh, because what happens, then the young people become adults. Right. And guess who they go talk to? Those same people, yeah. Yeah, they're going to call Alan, they're going to call Cameron, and yes. they're going to call those guys and say, hey, you know, if you're a youth pastor, you're going to call Alan Pointer mm-hmm. and say, hey, this is going on. What do I do here? Mm-hmm. Help me out. Yeah. So give them time, listen to them. If you'll listen, you'll know what's going on. And mm-hmm. care, it puts you in a position to help. And I fear sometimes we don't realize just how much we can really do, how we, how we really can help the young people in our church, our own family. Um, but if we would do these things, we, we would be helping them. And then we think about like the church, the Lord's given us within our churches, the people with the various gifts that they need. There's people within our churches that have, you know, a a Alan Pointer type and Neil Gillen type on perhaps a different level. But we've got those folks, don't we? I would tell you, I'm sitting here for this reason. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a small rural church in southern Ohio. There were probably, I don't know seven or eight of us little boys. Mm-hmm. And we went to our deacons and we said, could we have a Boy Scout troop? And they said, no, we don't want to do that, but we will take you camping. And all summer long, almost every Friday night, three or four of those deacons took these seven or eight little... By the way, we never did one thing spiritual other than praying before we ate and before we <laughs> went to bed. I think Pappy O'Dell would read a, a passage of Scripture. And then we went to bed. We stayed out in the woods Mm-hmm. Uh, every time something happened at the church, they want like they're going to work on the parking lot. They wanted us to be there. We were in the way, uh-huh. but they want. What did they do? Exactly that. Right. They right. invested the time. I'm here today because of those men. There you go. There you go. Who who were not the Allen Pointers and the Cameron Lanes mm-hmm. and the Ryan Acres. They weren't those guys. Mm-hmm. They were just. Guys who worked at the railroad. That loved Jesus. Who loved and, Jesus yeah. and loved us boys. <clears throat> and, and we need to remember that's Titus 2, what you're talking about. Absolutely. They're, where the older and the younger, you've got to be there. They're teaching you something about work. They're yeah, teaching I don't you know, about... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how Paul pulled that one off, did <laughs> I want all the old ladies to come up after the service. <laughs> yeah. Say that in your church and see who comes. Yes, and, uh, and yeah. teach the younger ladies. But that's our job. And right. I really do take that seriously. That's one of the reasons why I do what I Mm -hmm. do is because I think it's our responsibility to pass what Mm -hmm. we have on. I'm a bluegrass fan, and Mm -hmm. I go to this thing almost every year. It's called SPIGMA, the Society for the Preservation of Bluegrass Music Association. (laughs) And I went a few years ago, and sitting on a couch was a guy who will be in the Bluegrass Hall of Fame. Wow. And he was sitting with two boys, probably 10, 11 years old, and he sat and played with them for um, two or three hours. Mm-hmm. I watched them, and mm-hmm. they'd say, "Was that right?" He goes, "No, do this here." That's exactly what we're talking. He said, yes. "This is the way we pass our music along. Uh-huh. That's exactly how we pass our faith along." That's great. Is to be involved and to do those things. 
Now, one of the podcasts um, we've done recently is about security, and we've also got one on child protection. And so mm-hmm. there's somebody probably out there saying, oh, no, but what about this? And, yeah. uh, and, and how do you cover and protect for this? But you can, you can. Um, yeah. cover for that. And you just, I think in some ways, you know, with people – sexual abuse and some of the things that have happened in the past as the devil has used that to just cut off the discipleship right. of young people and so what we want to remember is titus 2 is still in the bible it is and uh we truth and peace and other churches all through the through history have found ways to do this we can do this too just maintain some of the safety that we've talked about right. elsewhere absolutely but we cannot let that stop us from doing the discipleship Absolutely. that you've talked about with us today and that we see di- talked about there in the scripture. Yeah. So you listeners out there, remember, you know, we can have the t- we've got our different two adult rules and so forth. We protect ourselves, but we also yeah. don't stop uh, discipling our children, yeah. our young people, trying to help them come along. Absolutely. Well, you have given us a lot to talk about here, or well, think about here today, Neil. So, if is there a, anything else, I just say, I, you know, I that's probably not part of where you're going, but I just want to say thanks to a denomination that has these opportunities for our young people. Yes, uh, that invest in. I always say this probably be offensive to some, but if if it wasn't for the youth conference, we could hold the national at Kofor's Chapel. Uh, uh, d- but uh, we have a denomination that invests in our mm-hmm. young people mm-hmm. through uh, Vertical 3 and all the competitions, not just Truth and Peace and the E-Team, which are wonderful programs, but the entire denomination really supports our young people, mm-hmm. and, and I really, really appreciate it. And I just f- feel very honored to get to be a little part of that. Well, I'm glad you pointed that out. And so sometimes we have a... We can envy others and what they have. There's no better programs than... Uh, in- Most denominations I know of will do a big youth thing every three years. Mm-hmm. Not, and not, we do it every year. We do it every year. Every year. And we're seeing the fruit of it. Yes. Uh, and we, as we look at folks that are in the ministry now and folks that are ministering in their churches in different ways. And so let's continue on with that Absolutely. and import to it, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, my friend, for sharing with us. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and a delight.